वेलकम बैक प्रीवियस पॉडकास्ट में बात करें और बात करें एक टॉपिक के ऊपर दे विल बी जंप डीप एंड फॉलो द डॉट सो लेट्स सी व्हाट आर द डिफरेंट जंप वी कैन फॉलो द डॉट सो एज वी हैव स्टडीड इन द अदर पॉडकास्ट दैट वी हैव डन दैट जंप इंस्ट्रक्शंस बेसिकली आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ जंप्स वन इज कंडीशनल जंप एंड वन इज अनकंडीशनल जंप so conditional jumps are the jumps which depend upon a condition and most of these conditions are a condition set by a flag or a symbol condition set by a pure flag or blank flag or any other flag and uh, sometimes these conditions are also set by an object a physical object so these are some of the conditional flags conditional states of jumps jump states of jumps jump zero it jumps only if a zero flag is there or the container can be later become zero so the container has to later become zero so automatically zero flag is set and your jump statement is executed jump not zero it is true only if the attribute is accepted not if there is a zero a zero flag is not set decrement jump not zero is a statement when uh, when which uh, if executed it decrements the content of a register and it will move to the next address location provided your accumulated content is not equal to 0 decrement jump not 0 so then you have compare jump not equal you compare the content of an accumulator or a register along with a byte or immediate data and it will jump to the relative address location provided the content of the accumulator or a register is not equal to the immediate data or uh, content of any register so If you jump to a particular address location, provided so you have jump carry, jump no carry. Similarly, jump if a particular bit is set or reset. So all these things are different conditions on which a conditional jump takes place. So basically, there are the the, the unconditional jumps are some statements like L jump and S jump. Now L jump is a long jump, and S jump is a short jump. so unconditional jumps are jumps which do not have any condition set to it it will jump provided that statement is executed it will surely jump to the particular address location so what is the difference between l jump and s jump s jump as it as it is seen as short jump it can be taken only within 2 kilobyte of uh 2 kilobyte of a memory location uh, sorry not 2 kilobyte only between 127 and minus 128 byte so if Uh, my particular uh, jump instruction happens to be at, at a particular location before this uh, if this is the place where jump instruction is taking place s jump if s jump takes place so it can go up to minus 128 bytes before this it can jump to any location uh, up to 1 minus 28 bytes or it can jump to any location up to 127 bytes let's say so it can jump anywhere between 256 bytes of memory space that is a limitation with short jump and l jump l jump is a statement if it is executed with any particular memory location you can take the jump within anywhere of the 64 kilobyte of memory location the other difference between them is in l jump is a 3 byte instruction where s jump is a 2 byte instruction so if you're sure you're going to Uh, jump within 128 bytes of a memory location why not use s jump by that you reduce one byte to short jump the next type of uh, the next thing that we will study is how do we uh, uh, calculate the uh, target address of s jump and l jump as i said target address is the present address plus the if the jump is happening at a particular place the present address of that particular location where the s jump is getting executed plus 127 or 128 bytes from minus 128 bytes uh, from that location that's how we will calculate the target location if it falls within the short jump instruction uh, restricted area space uh, call instruction so what is a call instruction call instruction is a little different from the jump statement in that call instructions are used to call a subroutine so what is a subroutine a subroutine is another set of programs which has to be executed provided a given condition so 
so provided to create a delay or a, to meet a condition or to do a repeated manipulation you can use a call statement to call a subroutine so a subroutine is not a part of a main program it's like a function you call the function from the main function whenever the function is executed you go back to your main function so call is an instruction to call a subroutine so at the end of every subroutine there is always a ret or return in statement which will take back your instruction back to the place for where it was left so that is what is a call instruction so you have two types of call that is l call and a call l call is the long call and a call is a absolute call so what is the difference between them the difference is a call is a call statement which can jump within anywhere between 2 kilobyte of memory location so from this present memory range your entire 64 kilobyte of memory is actually divided into 2 kilobytes of page memory 2 kilobytes of page memory so a uh, absolute call can jump anywhere in this 2 kilobyte of memory location whereas a long call can jump anywhere in this 64 kilobyte of memory location so that's the difference between l call and a call uh, as it is written uh, as uh, we can see on the screen how does a call instruction works whenever a call instruction is uh, executed the control is transferred to a subroutine now whenever a control is transferred to the subroutine the very location from the where the call statement was executed the next instruction that receives is actually stored in the top of the stack and after the execution of the call statement whenever a return statement is encountered the top of the stack is restored back to your program counter so whenever the top of the stack is restored back to the program counter your program will go back to the same address location from where it left before the next address location from where it left your program before so that's how it goes back to your main function so okay so as we studied what is the difference between a call and x x uh, l call so mostly the call instructions are used to create delays okay so a delay is an operation uh, which can be understood by first understanding or how to find the timing of one instruction so t i m c and timing of an instruction can be found by this formula as we studied in the architecture class by this formula called c into 12d divided by crystal cubic zero so what is c c over here is the is the machine cycle number of cycles required to execute one instruction okay and 12d is 12 decimal is that number and crystal frequency is the oscillator frequency of the uh, if you microcontroller it can be 1 megahertz it can be up to 18 to 20 megahertz also okay so that is what is crystal frequency of the oscillator so once you know the number of cycles for example you take one instruction which takes number of cycles 1 and once you know the crystal frequency let's take for example 12 uh, megahertz is the crystal frequency in 12 in 10 power 6 so our answer will be for such an instruction the timing required will be 1 micro second 10 power 6 goes up 1 into 10 power 6 minus 6 Microsecond time is required to execute such instruction. So that is how delay calculation happens. So you understand the timing required by each instruction, and find out how many iterations are there for a particular instruction, and then you find out the total time required for the entire subroutine, and that's how you understand how much delay is being carried out by a particular subroutine. So as you can see over here. Uh, if the clock frequency is set to be 11.0592 megahertz, how long it takes to execute each of these instructions? So you can find in how each instruction, for example, mu arc r3 comma hash 55 takes one machine cycle, which may take up to 1.085 microsecond. 
okay so these are the references from where we have studied all these where we have referred all these notes from uh, i highly refer uh, this second book called by muhammad ali masdi and uh, jg masdi and rd nasim day uh, this book comes with lot of examples in assembly language programming and all the topics that we have seen thank you